The time has come to make a paint booth. Dun dun dun. Hey there fellow maker, welcome down to the shop. Today I'm making a booth for painting. There are some concerns when you spray a lot of paint, you're putting a lot of particulates and potentially harmful vapors into the air. We want a way to contain that and then take those vapors and get them away from our faces and our lungs. So I'm gonna build one from scratch today and I'm gonna build it on top of my laser cutter. I've already got a design plotted out. I'll be focusing on building the box and that's what you would be building at home. Uh, I just happen to already have this rolling cart for my laser cutter and the laser cutter already has a fan for extraction so I can use that to both extract fumes from the laser and my box. What's that? Someone put a, a, a bucket of resin on here and now every single page has a spot on it. Eventually when I get to the end though, it'll be clean. Just like our vacuum forming table, the big one that we made a while back, I'm trying to make everything with parts from the hardware store, just stuff you can run out and buy locally. So most of the construction is gonna be two by fours because they're super cheap. And then for the walls, I took a note out of my buddy Bob over at I Like To Make Stuff, his playbook. He built his paint booth out of this corrugated plastic. So I got a couple of sheets like that. You can even build, if you need just a smaller paint booth, you can build the whole thing out of this and duct tape. That's really all you would need for the box. I'm just gonna make mine a little bit sturdier by framing it with two by fours. I refined my previous sketch a little bit and kind of planned out how everything's going together. And most importantly, I figured out how long each of the two by fours need to be. So I've got a cut list over here. I know how many two by fours I need in different lengths. So now I can just line them up and cut them all at the same time. To cut them, I'm gonna need a good cutting tool. No, maybe, yes. I cut the two by fours to length and to join them, I'm gonna try out pocket screws. I've never used these before, but I hear they're all the rage. Uh, I got the bare minimum to give it a go. Just the tiniest little jig and a little clamp to put them together. Uh, these little off cuts of two by four, I'm gonna throw them away. So instead I'm gonna use them to figure out how this thing works. The jig goes to the edge of it and gets clamped on like so. There we go. And then we drill a hole in here, uh, which means I'm gonna need a drill. <laughs> Let's go get that. I suspect I need to go a lot deeper than that. All right, let's move the collar up, like way up there. I guess until it just comes out the end. Oh, there it goes. I guess that's probably about right. Now there are specific pocket hole screws I need to use. And I even have this long uh, drill bit to help me out there. And those should go in like that and connect into the other two by four like that. This, this isn't gonna join two together. This will be going kind of like that. And I can use my same clamp, I hope. And the, the big wide circle there should keep them flush. And then I should be able to do this. And that's that. All right, obviously I'll have more than one uh, per joint so it doesn't twist, but that feels pretty strong. Cool, um, I have a lot of holes to drill. Let's get to it. I think I have all the holes drilled and now it's time to screw everything together. I'm gonna to start by making the side panels of our enclosure. 
and it's gonna go something like that. I should be able to just screw those in. I can use this clamp to hold these together on their faces. Pretty snug, pretty square. And then we should just be able to drive a couple screws in and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, that feels good. There's gonna be a shelf. This will be the bottom of the paint booth. That'll be the roof of the laser cutter enclosure. And it is 30 inches down. That is gonna be the top of this. Just gonna, I'm just gonna repeat that to myself. Not this, it's this. Good, Bill, good. That looks pretty good. I don't know if I need, we need to clamp it. I think I can just screw it in. That is one side. I gotta build one more of these and then we can stick them together. Top, and bottom. Over here, over here, over here. I think it's over here. Okay, a couple more pieces. Oh yeah, this will be super easy. These guys go right here. Pocket holes may not have been the right choice for this joint here because I could just drive a screw right straight through. That's probably a better option. So I'm gonna get the angle grinder and just grind these off, leave them in there and then drive another screw through there and we should be all set. I think it's time to put this on the cart. We'll see how it goes. Oop. This is when we find out if I measured everything correctly. It looks right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the idea. It can move around where I need it. The paint booth is here and I can still go down here and get at the laser and it should just be able to open. Perfect. <laughs> It feels really good when you draw something on paper and then when you make it, it actually does the thing you thought it would do. Although maybe I'm talking too soon, we'll see. <laughs> I'm gonna attach the, uh, this fella to this fella with screws from the bottom. And roll it around. It's time to put some sort of base on this. I'm probably gonna use wood. I have a, a scrap piece of OSB I'll use. But again, if you're making this out of just that sheet plastic and it's gonna rest on a countertop, then you don't need a really sturdy base. You could just build the whole thing out of plastic and duct tape. Uh, but I'm, again, I want this to be super sturdy, so I'm gonna cut out a piece of wood for that. This should fit right in there, but I do need to notch out the corners where the, the support two by fours are gonna go. So I'll just use this chunk to draw a line in both directions, and then we'll cut it out with a jigsaw. There we go. Now hopefully this fits in perfectly. It's not perfect. But it's pretty good. The next thing I need to make is some sort of compartment in the back where the air is gonna come in. So I need like a wall right there. I don't have enough OSB, so I'm gonna have to get clever with whatever I have in my pile of wood over there. I found these pieces of wood and uh, I'm gonna cut them to size and then join them in some way to create the back wall of our, our compartment here. Got these gnarly boards all cut down to dimension and uh, before I stick them together, I wanna figure out where I wanna cut a hole for my filter. So that's where that'll go. I'm gonna cut a hole there, but I'm gonna come in an inch so there's a lip there. Okay, let's go cut them out.
This is definitely more complicated than it needs to be because I did not buy all the wood I needed, but that's okay, I'm making it work. These are all gonna get stuck together. I should probably throw some glue in there actually. I got wood glue. And uh, to hold everything together, I cut a bunch of these one by twos that'll uh, support it, but it's also gonna create a lip for this filter to go in there. We'll have a uh, top and a bottom. And I want it to be snug enough that I can press it in there and it'll stay all by itself. And we can peel it out to replace it. Okay. While I'm working on that, I'd like to take a chance to thank our patrons, our wonderful, beautiful patrons, and their support, which helps us afford this fantastic workshop, as well as a couple of employees. They thank you too. If you'd like to join in on the fun, get access to behind the scenes vlogs, those come out every single week. And we do early releases on our build videos and extra credit videos for our build videos, including this one. Then head on over to patreon.com slash punish props and consider tossing us a dollar a week. Thank you. And let's get back to the build. This isn't the prettiest thing I made, but hopefully it fits. It does. <laughs> yeah! All right, let's get some screws. You staying? Don't fall. Okay, great. This small gap here will become a compartment for the suction. I do need to cap off the top there, so I just cut this board out, and that's gonna go in right there. Just like that. And we'll find a way to seal all the edges because I can still see light through some of those, but that's next. Now I need to screw this in. I've decided to go with duct tape. This is exactly the same stuff that Bob used on his paint booth and it seemed to work for him. So I'm just gonna put a strip of tape over all the seams, including the joins I made here uh, between these panels because they're terrible. And hopefully that'll make everything nice and airtight. It's ugly, but it should work. Uh, we're also never gonna see it because I gotta put a board on the back of it here. Again, I don't have a board big enough to cover the whole thing, but I should be able to join these two pieces of OSB. We also need to add a hole for the air outlet. And this is uh, the connector piece for it, just from the hardware store. That'll get screwed in, but I also have to drill a hole in this piece of wood. Whoop, right through. Like that. There we go. So I'll do this in two parts. This will go up first, and let's get it near where it needs to go. I'm gonna put a lot of screws in this because it needs to be airtight. I'll probably go over the edge maybe with some silicone caulk to make sure that it's nice and airtight. This should close everything off nicely. And that'll get the screw treatment too. There we go. And again, screws everywhere and I'll seal everything. Maybe I can just put duct tape all over it. I'll probably just put duct tape all over it. This is the back, it's gonna be against the wall. You won't see how gnarly it is. Looking good so far. I don't know if the suction's gonna work, we'll find out in a little bit. But first, it's time to put the sides and top on and that's where this plastic is gonna come in. So I'm just gonna cut a couple sheets and just staple them to the outside. This part doesn't need to be airtight. Obviously the whole front of it's open. <laughs> okay, let's take some measurements and cut it out. This piece here is just gonna be a cross piece up top. I'll put it in with some screws. I'm gonna put some hooks in here so when I'm painting stuff I can just hang it. That's a really great noise. <laughs> I 
one. This is almost literally like plastic cardboard. It's corrugated the same way. It's just a little more durable and waterproof. I also like that it's white and it should let a little bit of light in. Although this is probably gonna get covered in paint uh, in no time flat. Whew. I hope, or I'm gonna try anyway, to put this on with staples. Let's see if it works. So far, so good. I half expected that to fall. We got our roof installed and our sides installed. And to make this operational, we're gonna have to add some suction. And I have this blower here. This is the one that came with my laser cutter. And I am gonna go double check and make sure this is totally safe to use in a spray booth. Uh, but what you want to get is uh, like a furnace blower or something where the motor doesn't come in contact with the fumes. If there's a spark from the motor and uh, you're spraying something that might be flammable, it could cause a fire. So you want to make sure you get the right blower. For this guy, I'm going to actually set this up to pull from here and from the laser. Uh, if, unless you have the same exact situation, uh, you wouldn't have to do that. But you could literally just hook up the hose on the suction end of this to the tube you put on the back, and then you put your filter in here, you're good to go. I'm just gonna make it a little more complicated because that's how I roll. Here's my setup. The blower is here, air goes in there and out there, which will be vented outside. Uh, this will split out to go to the two different tools, and then these gates will give me the opportunity to open and close one or both of them. Gonna go ahead and connect them all with some hose. A Little bit there can go over this. And I'll use a hose clamp to cinch that on. Cool, let's cinch that down. Nice and snug. Uh, I'm gonna put the next hose clamp on before I put on the blast gate. So that can go over that. And then this is gonna be stuck to the wall like that. So I don't want this facing into the wall. I want it facing up. Nice and snug. This is going to get attached to a two by four, which I'm gonna to attach to the side of the enclosure. This stuff is super awesome. It's cheap at the hardware store. It's just a band of metal with holes in it that you can use to lash stuff to other stuff in a temporary, but very secure manner. And then let's flip this whole thing over. I may have to use a couple of these, but that's all right. I can really cinch that if I want to. This will all be against the side of it, so you'll never see any of that. And then this whole thing can go over on the enclosure. Great, now I can connect that to the fan and this to that. Snug that guy right on there. And then this can go right up there. Perfect. Now I can do that to let the air go. I'll just, I'll just hold it. <laughs> Boop. I had this whole thing under the laser and it's gonna go back under there. To hold it down to there, I gotta attach it to this piece of wood. There we go. This will connect up there. Some other laser stuff, like this is an air compressor and there's a reservoir here, a water pump to cool the laser. That'll all live under here. What I might do is close this whole area off with foam or something to dampen the sound because this gets kind of loud. There we go. Nice and snug. I think we've done the bare minimum to make a functioning spray booth. So I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll snug our filter in. I don't know which way is in and which way is out, but that's fine. It is snug enough that it'll stay in there. Awesome. And then time for the first spray test. Got some spray paint here. 
plugging in the fan. I'm gonna spray it there and see where it goes. Yeah, it's, getting, it's taking a sharp left turn and going right in there. And if I were painting like this, it would all just go right in there. Awesome. Of course, I need to add a hose down there so that the fumes don't just get sent back into the shop, but outside. I also need to do some cosmetic stuff here. I'm gonna add lights, tidy up some of these wires. Um, I accidentally uh, put it on here backwards, so I have to turn the laser cutter around. So I'm gonna tackle all of that, and then we'll see what I ended up with. Time for light. Ding. You go out to the door. And that is my overly complicated and kind of ugly spray booth, but it should get the job done. Uh, this guy right here was a cool addition. I found this at a music store. It's actually used for stage performances, uh, but it's like a power strip with everything plugged in behind it, and I can individually turn things on and off. There's my airbrush. There's the extractor. And then these are for the laser over there. So that was a really cool find and a great addition. All of this has one power cord coming out the back that goes right into the wall. And then there's one more cord that's an ethernet cord for the laser. So it's very tidy. Over here, we control all the extraction. I can decide to pick one or both of the laser and the paint booth right here. Uh, the air gets pulled out of those two places down here to the fan, which is under the whole contraption. And then that gets blown right out the door via this hose. On the other side here, I have a couple of shelves just for storing things like things for my laser. I put my airbrush over here. That way I always have it for painting. It's plugged in always. I can turn it on whenever I want via the front panel over here and do all my painting. And of course we have our filter here that is replaceable. This is very nice. Back in there. Now this would be considered really more of a hobby spray booth, you're just gonna be doing airbrushing, maybe some light rattle can work in your garage or basement, this should work just fine. This is definitely not uh, OSHA certified or meant for industrial use, and we'll just be using it for like airbrushing. If we wanna do any like big spray painting type stuff, we'll still open the garage door and spray it outside. If you'd like to build one of these for yourself at home, totally doable, you can do it in a 
giant range of prices and, and quality. The things you want to consider are you definitely need an enclosure just to keep all the particles and everything contained. You definitely want to filter with good suction like this. Replaceable are nice. You may even put some baffles in front of this to collect a lot of the paint particles before they even get to the filter. You need a good fan. You need the right kind of fan that's the safest kind of fan. Some sort of uh, furnace blower would work. Uh, and of course, lighting is super, super helpful so you can see everything while you are doing your work. That's gonna do it for this build. I'd like to thank our patrons again. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for the support. You can head on over to patreon.com slash punish props if you'd like to jump in on the fun, help support us a little bit, get some extra content for your eyeballs. All the tools and materials I use for this build will be linked down in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out. That's gonna do it for this build. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the shop today. And I'll see you in the next build. <laughs> that didn't work at all. Hold on, I have to tighten this. Let's see here. Which is right here. I can. Oh, there goes that. Whoop. Yep, that happened. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> Did it again. My tube the tube of furs. Tube of furs.